Today I'm going to talk about how to start a good abstract painting. Whenever we start a painting we always want it to be good and we have that idea in our head that um, you know we want the outcome to be good when we start a painting and really that's what we shouldn't be thinking about. The best way, the, the best way to ensure, the, to give yourself the best chance to have a really good outcome is not to think of the outcome. And in my experience, the best way to start is to start without thinking about what you're doing, is to sort of trick yourself into, into making a good painting. So the, fir the first place we go to is just to play and to experiment and to have in our mind, let's see what I can do, instead of saying, let's see what I can make. Because when we talk about making something, we're kind of talking about the end product. But when we're talking about doing something, we're talking about the process. We're talking about what we're actually going to do in order to make that end product, which we're not going to think about. So <laughs> um, we need to think about what, we need to be, get curious about what can I do. The way that I do it is that my first focus when I start a painting is about the surface. I want to create a really interesting, yummy surface. I start with a blank canvas or a blank panel or a blank piece of paper and there's really not a lot of interesting stuff there to get me fired up. But if I've got something in front of me that has some marks and has some paint effects or something on it, that's going to get me interested and then I can move on to the next step. So the first thing to do is to make that surface really interesting. And the best way to do that is just to play with materials. But what we need to think about when we're playing with materials is thinking about contrasts. So instead of putting paint all over the thing, all over your surface, you know, mixing up a colour and then putting that all over and it all being the same, how about trying something like mixing up a paint and putting it over some of the surface, letting that dry, and then pouring on a little bit of ink and putting that on because that has a different consistency and it moves on the surface differently than paint and it will have a different effect than the paint. And before you know where you are, you've got two things that are different sitting on your surface and instantly that surface has got interesting. Once you've done that, you're then ready to start thinking about what else you can do. And you just go about, ask the same question, what two things can I do now that are different? So I've got paint and I've got ink. What's different to that? It could be a crayon or a pastel or a pencil or some charcoal or anything, anything. Maybe it's, you know, I'm thinking it's about something dry as opposed to something wet because we've just had two things that are wet. Constantly turning the thing around. I, I work in squares and I, I suggest when you're a beginner to work in a square because then you just turn it around and you don't, don't change the format. It remains a square whichever way you work. So turn it around and do something different over the top of everything. And by doing this, you are building that surface with layers, you're creating depth, you're, um, you're putting, butting up contrast together, you're putting differences next to each other, and they have interesting conversations. You're getting edges, and you are making a painting. But that's the, that's the byproduct of just being curious about if I use this, what happens, and if I use that, what happens. So that's where you need to start. So our beginnings are just really uh, an exploration, a playful time with a little bit of intent because we're thinking about what we're using. But um, it's, that's what it's all about. It's about adventure. It's about going on an adventure, exploring, playing with materials. So we want this adventure and this playful time and this exploration to result in wonderful discoveries that we can use and can be become really strong parts of our painting. Now if we do this on one panel or one piece of paper or one canvas we're going to explore you know with something and that's going to be the limit of our exploration just one. 
If we do it over, and I suggest at least three at a time, then each time you do it, you get a little bit looser, you try it a little bit differently, and the exploration is broader. And then, so you have more examples of, you know, variations on a theme. What I did, what happened when I mixed this with this, and then on this one I chucked in a bit of water, and what happened there, and on the next one I tried this, and, and look what happened there. And now I can take the idea that I've, that I've discovered on this panel, and I can try it on top of this one over here. So our, the exploration and the adventure is broader and it becomes deeper because you can apply things to, um, you, can apply, you can apply your discoveries. You're not only discovering, but you can apply them to another thing and see how they work in different ways. So that will result in um, greater learning, more discoveries and better art. When I start a series of paintings, I never do just one at a time. I always work in, I like to work in about seven paintings at a time, and I try and keep them at the same level at the same, you know, at the same time. So I start them all off and I just rotate and go from one to the other, you know, keeping them all at the same stage. Towards the end, um, I, well, some of them will finish a little bit earlier than the others, and I'm always left with one. And I find the last one that I'm left with the most difficult because I just have that one to concentrate on and I can get a bit bogged down in it. So it's a really good practice to have more than one on the go at the same time and try to keep them at the same stage. Once you have gone through that exploration phase, and actually the whole painting process is one of exploration, it never really stops but you kind of get more analytical as you move into the middle stage and the, and the kind of editing final stages of the painting. But in that beginning stage, it's all about exploration. And for me, it's all about creating a really interesting surface to work from. And once you've got that really interesting surface, that will suggest things to you. That will um, offer you um, lots of options or it will lead you into a direction each painting will lead you into a direction whether it might be you know a particular color combination that's working really nicely or a lovely mark that's working really nicely those directions looking and finding those bits that you love are the, are the sort of signposts waving to you what this painting could uh, could be about and which direction you could take the painting and then what you bring to the painting is things that you love. So the more things that you discover and you love, the more you've got to give the painting. So that's really, um, in a nutshell, how you make sure that your abstract artwork is going to, ha going to be successful and going to have a really good outcome. Forget about the outcome, first of all, and just go into exploration mode. And um, that's how you start a really good abstract painting.